so nice to be here. It's so nice to be in Belfast and to be back at Build Peace to see some people I know and lots of people I don't. So thank you. So Ellen has given you a rundown of the broad theme, um, which is the reimagination of prosperity. But we also have three sub-themes this year. And I want to go a little bit more into those and also explain to you how you can explore them through the program. So one of the things that I really love about Build Peace is that I think it gives us a really practical grounding in topics that can sometimes seem very academic or nebulous. Um, so to give you a little bit, to kind of get us started on the practical side, I'm going to go through each of the sub-themes and just give you a couple of examples of some of the talks and workshops that fit within each one. So of course, there are so many talks and workshops, and I'm not going to go into all of them, but I trust that you all will study the program in detail if you haven't already. So the first uh, sub-theme is looking at creativity and reconciliation. So we're asking how can creative and digital economies create the conditions for reconciliation and coexistence? And Eleanor just mentioned that creativity has been really a part of Build Peace from the beginning, or at least from Zurich. And I'm always really impressed by the creativity of the people that are here. You can see it um, on show, also in the interactive exhibition. But this year, we're going a little bit deeper, I think, and we're asking exactly what is the role of creativity in reconciliation, and how does it link with digital economies? So to give you a few examples, we have a short talk today um, on six world regions where creativity or digital projects are being used to secure peace and prosperity by Dawn Grant. And we have a workshop tomorrow morning which is exploring the role of festivals and community festivals in reconciliation in conflict and post-conflict settings. And then on Wednesday we have a panel on exactly this topic. So that's creativity and reconciliation. Our second sub-theme is about inclusion and social cohesion. And Eleanor started to talk about this a little bit just now. So here we're asking, you know, how can creative and digital economies actually help secure prosperity for all. And I think there's sort of two parts to this question. So firstly, we're looking at, you know, how these creative, innovative approaches can promote inclusion in economic activities and reduce inequality. And there are lots of talks in this area. One is by a guy called Khaled, who is one of our Digital Steps Fellows in Syria. And unfortunately, Khaled won't be able to be here. Um, his visa application was rejected. But he's agreed to give his short talk by Skype. And this is um, looking at a Facebook chatbot that he's developing to connect job seekers with employers in an area of Damascus. And we also have a workshop on Wednesday on empathy and employability. And this is looking at the role of virtual exchanges in social cohesion, so very much in this sub-theme. Um, the second part of the inclusion sub-theme is looking at how we can bring vulnerable populations into prosperity. So how can we use these approaches to reach, for example, ex-combatants, minorities, and so on. And in this sub-theme, we have a short talk on Wednesday um, called Stories of Home, a Refugee Youth Playback Theatre Employment Project. And the... Boniface, who's giving this short talk, also had his visa rejected, so he's going to be giving the talk by Skype from Kenya. And we have a workshop on mobile money for displaced communities. This, that's this afternoon. And the final sub-theme is looking at sustainability and resilience. So we're asking, how can alternative economic models build local ownership that contributes to peace? And here we have a workshop on Wednesday on participatory budgeting in Colombia and Northern Ireland, which is very relevant. And we have a workshop that explores the link, the practical linkages between innovation, economics, and positive peace at the same time. And finally, we're also asking a really important question, I think, that we're all thinking about a lot, which is how can we engage corporate technology and corporate art in this conversation about prosperity and peace. And for that, I think this morning's dialogue on digital communities organizing or polarizing is incredibly relevant. And we also have a short talk about the role of the private sector in building peace. 
which touches on this, and a workshop um, tomorrow morning on assessing and mitigating the risks of doing business in conflict and post-conflict settings. So that gives you a bit of a sense of the sub-themes and how some of these talks and workshops are really directly relevant to these sub-themes. There are also some talks and workshops that are a bit more cross-cutting. So these might not fit neatly into one of these categories, but they're really important because they kind of give us some tools that will help us explore and answer some of the questions in the sub-themes. So one of the tools that we're going to be looking at is arts. Um, so as Lord Alderweireld mentioned, this is a really important topic. And there's a workshop organized by Fearless Futures, which is going to help participants use and actually create um, something using an arts-based methodology. And we have another workshop which is looking at resource mapping. And here, participants will actually go through a digital mapping process to explore the questions of economics, resources, and peace. So that's a, little, a few highlights. There are so many more. Um, so I really hope you'll enjoy. And I encourage you also to look at the interactive exhibition, which is in the foyer. There are some really interesting exhibits, and I encourage you to take time and talk to the people behind them as well. And we have uh, what we call the unconference happening on Wednesday afternoon. So for anybody that hasn't been to Build Peace before, the unconference is becoming a bit of a Build Peace tradition. And it's essentially a space where you, the participants, can propose and lead your own topics. So anything that you feel hasn't been addressed or you would really like to talk about, um, organize a workshop, just an informal meeting, whatever it may be, you can actually propose a topic. And in the past, we've had everything from very serious discussions about things that haven't been answered during the conference to tourism excursions or swimming trips in the river. So please be creative. The way it works is there will be a board in the foyer and it will be titled Unconference. And anybody can propose a topic um, between now and Wednesday lunchtime. So if you have an idea, please just put it up on the board. Please only put one uh, proposal per person because you'll be responsible for running that session and they all happen at the same time. So <laughs> we've had that happen before. Um, at 12 o'clock on Wednesday, Claudia will um, take all the proposals and put them into a schedule, which we'll share with you, and assign each unconference proposal a location. We have a very limited number of rooms, so we might need to get a bit creative with locations. Um, so just bear with us. So I think that's the program, and I hope you enjoy. I have a few housekeeping announcements because um, before we can get started. And the first one is actually not really a housekeeping announcement, but I really want to make this point to everyone, which is that there are four people who are not in this room who absolutely should be in this room and whose contributions, I think, are and would have been, but still are, incredibly important for this conversation. So I already mentioned Khaled and Boniface in Syria and Kenya. Um, we also have one of our Build Peace Fellows, Elma, in Bosnia, and one of our previous Build Peace Fellows, Jean-Marie, in Burundi. And all four of them had their visas rejected by the government, uh, despite our sponsorship. So I just wanted to make that known, and um, please bear in mind, and we'll hopefully be able to connect with Khaled and Boniface by Skype. So, yeah. Um, logistics on venues. The programs that you have printed may not be completely up to date. So there might have been some changes in workshop locations. So please check uh, the online program. will definitely be up to date. And also there are boards in the foyer which are now up to date. Um, with sort of crossed out rooms and so on. Uh, tea and coffee, I think you saw it this morning, but there's also going to be a dedicated room. So even if it's not a coffee break, you can go and help yourselves in BA008. Uh, this is also a workshop room. So when there's a workshop happening, it's not accessible, unless you're in the, the workshop. So you might want to choose your workshops. Um, <laughs> Wi-Fi should have been sorted now. There was um, some technical issues, but there are instruction sheets here. And so if you haven't yet connected to the Wi-Fi, 
um, you can do. And if you have any issues, just come to the registration desk and we can help you um, figure them out. Uh, fire. So there is going to be a fire drill on Wednesday, uh, I think between 1 and 1.30, so during lunch. And it will be announced as a fire drill, so you don't need to do anything. But if you hear the fire alarm at any other point, it's not a drill. Um, so please evacuate and meet us in the park um, just outside the front of the university. And we'll go from there. Um, please join our WhatsApp group. That's the link you can use to join. And basically, this is a way for us to provide updates um, throughout the conference and also for you to connect with each other as participants. We are going to be taking, you've seen Claudia already taking some pictures. We also are filming and we'll be taking some video footage throughout the conference um, for our own materials. If you do not want to appear in photos or videos, please go and talk to Eleanor. Um, she's the one that will be editing the video, so she needs to see your face um, so that she remembers. If you tell a volunteer or one of the organizers, it might not get through, so please do that. And before I finish, I would like to just do some thank yous to all of our sponsors, without whom this absolutely would not be possible. Um, so of course, I want to start by thanking our co-hosts and academic partners, the Center for Democracy and Peacebuilding, who have been absolutely incredible. Um, so thank you very much. But I also would like to thank Ulster University, Visit Belfast, Tourism Northern Ireland, UK Aid and the FCO Burma, the Borough of Armagh City, Bainbridge and Craigiven, Urban Villages, the Executive Office, a Grafton Recruitment, and just a note on Grafton Recruitment, they're actually facilitating a conversation about the future of work today at their stand in the foyer at 1.30, um, and everybody's welcome to attend. They're only here today, so please talk to them if you would like. The British Council Northern Ireland, the Community Relations Council, Destination Cathedral Quarter, Ormo Baths that are going to be hosting some of our evening events, Brown and O'Connor Communications, and TBUC, or TBUC. Apologies if I've got that wrong. And we're so grateful to all of them. So thank you very much um, to those that are in the room and to those that aren't. And my very last point is I just want all of the organizing team members to just stand up for a second um, so that the participants can see who you are. Eva, that includes you. <laughs> and you'll see that we all wear yellow badges and also the volunteers wear yellow badges. So please feel free to come and talk to us, ask us any questions, um, and just meet us if you haven't already. So I think that's everything. And I would like to yeah, bring Eleanor back, and she'll actually get the conference started. So thank you for your patience, and I hope you enjoy.